Hi you guys! Today's video is all about getting started in your travel journal. I know that a lot of you don't know where to start or are afraid to mess it up. So I'm going to give you a bunch of tips today, um, how to make something look cohesive and really let it reflect your experience. And most of all, that you are having fun making it. For this video, I will be using the Adventure Book Ultimate Traveler's Edition, uh, which I made after the original Adventure Book. So many people asked me to make a bigger version, so here it is. These travel journals have a spot for all 196 independent countries in the world, and this big guy also has room for another 68 territories. Um, it also contains maps and a bunch of checklists to visually keep track of all the countries you've visited, a bunch of fun challenges and ways to collect the moments you cherish. All right, let's move on to the video. So pick the country you want to fill in today, get a piece of paper and just write down whatever comes to mind about your trip to that country. And here are some examples of questions to ask yourself to spark your mind. What year and month were you there? Um, the person or persons you went on that trip with? Uh, what activities really stand out to you? Did you go on a hike? Did you take a cooking class? Did you go scuba diving? Did you read a lot of books? Was it like more of a relaxing vacation? Uh, like chilling by the pool is also an activity and can be something that absolutely made that trip. Um, was there a beautiful monument that you visited? Maybe there's a certain food that you've tried, a tour that you booked. Did something hilarious happen to you and your friends or your travel companions? Um, was there a moving moment? Maybe you've come across some gorgeous landscape, scenery or a beautiful sunset. Um, maybe you want to talk about the people that you've met or you have some pictures of them. Uh, did you maybe go to a very exciting party? Um, maybe you saw some wildlife. Another thing I really like to add is like, how did those places make you feel? And another one is a quote that maybe resonates with you on that trip and many, many more. So if these prompts are helpful to you, you can, you can screenshot this list and use it for reference when you start a new page in your travel journal. When you start to write these things down, a lot of memories will start to pop up in the form of photos or collected bits and bobs like ticket stubs, uh, brochures from a tour that you booked, uh, your airplane ticket, um, receipts, maybe a postcard or a postage stamp, uh, a city map, uh, really anything that relates to that travel memory. So go ahead and gather those. Then I go back to my piece of paper and I highlight about three to five memories that I absolutely love and I'm 100% sure that I want to include them on my page. And I know this may be hard to pick and don't worry, you can add more later. You just want to make sure that you don't start at random and then realize that you've run out of space and that you haven't included one of your favorite bits yet. Just a quick explanation on how I get my pictures the size I want them before really knowing my layout. First of all, I make my selection of photos. Then I put them on one or more uh, A4 sheets in Word, uh, Canva.com, uh, which is a free online editing tool, which is really good. Or if you're a little bit more advanced, I like to use InDesign, Photoshop or Illustrator. The trick is not to print each photo once, but to put them on the sheet in three different sizes or more if you're really unsure about the size that you want. And that way you can play around with it once that you're crafting your page and you're not stuck with one size that might not work well and you wish it was just a little bit bigger or just a little bit smaller. I like to use just very simple, thin, regular printing paper for my photos. Uh, because I know I will be layering things and this means that my book will bulge less and make it easier to layer things. So these are the bits that I will be using. I might make a drawing or two and I'll use stationery to jazz it up. But these are the core memories that we'll be working with, our parameters, so to say. As you already saw, the country page I want to fill today is Belgium. Uh, I start by cutting everything out so that it's easier to play around with the photos and the different sizes once I start to lay out the page. So now I start by just trying things out, moving them around, adding things, removing things, 
until it feels good and only then I start to paste bits down. I have fear of the blank page just as much as you do and I want to be kind of sure before committing. To break up the background, I often use some brown wrapping paper, uh, paper scraps or colored paper. Uh, not only does this make your page more colorful, but it creates sections. So if you've visited multiple cities, for instance, you can use those backgrounds to kind of pull them apart from each other. You can also use patterned paper or a photo for the background so you instantly get a feel for what type of country you're looking at. For instance, snowy mountains for Austria, um, super intricate tiles in warm tones and gold finishing uh, from Morocco, maybe zebra stripes from South Africa, or just a piece of map to instantly give it wanderlust vibes. And while I'm putting this page together, I want to share some of my favorite tips and ideas. Um, you definitely don't have to use all of them on one page, but they might give you some inspiration that you want to use on yours. I realized very early on that I probably have too many photos for this page, but I really wanted to use all of them. So we're going to do a little bit of an expansive method, a uh, flip out, flip over moment. Uh, just so that we have a little bit more space to add in those pictures. They're from a girl's trip to Antwerp with one of my best friends. And I really, really love those photos. So I did want them in there. So as you can see, I just use a little bit of scrap paper and uh, I'm going to tape that to the page uh, a little bit later on, just using washi tapes. Okay, so now I'm pasting the first pictures down. At some point you just have to commit because it gets irritating that things keep moving around. You probably already noticed that a few of my photos have this Polaroid border around them. Uh, I found these on Canva or you can just look them up through Google. Uh, and I just love how they give it that vintage vibe. And it also just instantly creates, creates some space to write something about the photo. Um, you can just add like the photo you want to use and that border together in Canva or on in Word. Um, but I just really like the look that it gives the page. For the glue, I'm using this simple uh, roller stick. I don't use like wet glue, very liquid glue, because I feel like it really adds bubbles to the paper. Um, and I don't really like that. So just a simple roller glue is my favorite type of glue to use. And like I mentioned, washi tapes are the best. They just make a page so much more colorful, add a bunch of detail, and there's just so much variation uh, in the world of washi tapes that you can't really go wrong. And um, the fact that if you put it on there, you don't really like it, you can easily just take it off again without damaging the paper, which is really great for those of you, and me included, who are uh, very indecisive about what we do and do not like. If you still have some things left that you really want to include, but you ran out of space, um, you can always make something that could flip open, uh, that can fold out like a harmonica. You can make an envelope where you put in different items. Um, you can have one of your photos uh, flip over so that you can use the back side of it. There are lots of things you can do to kind of create more real estate. And of course, there are countries you might want to go back to. So if that's what you're doing now, then uh, you can just leave some blank space or use one of the expansive methods I mentioned to still include your future trips. So you can add an, a little envelope or make a flip out so that you still have room for future trips. In the middle of the page, you see this little half moon. Uh, that was actually from a flyer that I got from the, um, the brewery in Bruges. We took a tour there and uh, it was a really, really cool place. We had some nice uh, Belgian specialty beers there. And uh, the brewery is called the Halve Man, which means the half moon. And I thought it was just a really nice way to include that memory instead of just having to use the entire flyer. Um, because now I see that now when I see that that moon, it just instantly brings back that memory. I don't need the entire flyer to uh, to remind me of that. 
Robin and I went on a road trip through Belgium uh, and we went to multiple cities. It was one of the first trips we took when he got his driver's license and uh, it was so much fun and uh, I really wanted to capture that by uh, doing this like road map and adding the, the pinpoints um, to really give it that memory of the road trip that we, we've been on. So if you have traveled around a country, it's really fun to draw the entire country, the outline of the country on your page and uh, draw the route that you took. And you can add in the places that you stopped by using arrows to uh, link photos you have of the places to the map. Um, and don't worry, I'm not uh, expecting you to know how to draw the outline of Indonesia or something uh, that you know that by heart. You can just print it out um, you can cut the outline and then trace the edges with your pen or you can use your uncut printout and get some carbon paper which is a transfer paper and just trace the outline of the country with your pencil and it will um, the, your marks will transfer onto the paper which is super handy I do also like to add in some memories just by writing them down. Some memories just translate better just in writing. I don't have a drawing or a photo that matches that memory. And uh, some quirky details are just fun to remember, uh, things that you might forget throughout the years. And then when you read them again, it's just very fun to read. And I also like how it looks. Or if you suck at calligraphy like me, you can just print out a couple of things like I've done here. Um, I printed out the city names and some like extra notes I wanted to add to it. I feel like it really gives it more detail and makes it more in interesting to look at. Uh, and I just, I'm not really good at calligraphy. It takes me forever to do it. And when I'm done, I'm, I don't really like it that much. So, you know, just type it out on your computer. There's no shame in that. Like I mentioned before, I have pretty big fear of the blank page myself as well. So I wanna be sure that I like what I see before I uh, paste things down. Uh, another tip is that you can take a photo before you start pasting things down because things can shift and then you're not sure where everything uh, went. And um, then you have a reference for once you start pasting things down. So when I think I'm about done, I always like to step back a little bit, uh, see what it looks like, if I remember something or if I feel I should add some things, if there are blank spaces I wanna use and do something with. And then I often just go in and add some stickers, or maybe a washi tape here and there, just adding in some details, things that aren't like pertinent to the story of the page, but just make it look uh, more fun or uh, just decorate it a little bit. Then I finish up by filling the checkbox. You can do a simple check, uh, color it in with a color from your color scheme or draw the country's flag in the square. You can put a little sticker in it, anything goes. And there you have it, the result of my Belgium country page. Really loving how this uh, fold out moment also turned out. I think it's really cute and gave me that little bit of extra space to add in those photos. And um, yeah, everything that I wanted on there is on there, nicely wrapped together all in one page. Be sure to check out my Instagram where I share my own creations, but tons of creations from you guys as well. And that's really fun because you can see how everyone has a different style. Everyone has a different take on how they want to fill in a page, uh, different experiences. So they're really, really awesome to see. I hope you liked this video and that it inspired you. If you like these videos and want me to make more, it would really help me by subscribing to this channel, liking the video and leaving a comment below. Have an awesome day and I'll see you next time. Bye.